as we start chapter 3, section 3.1 here at the beginning, we're getting into the study of statistics, which is basically concerned with gathering and analyzing, summarizing data, and finding ways to answer questions from it. So statistics, statistics as a whole is all about how do we make sense of data. But to start out with that, section 3.1 will talk about how to gather data. And then in later sections, we'll talk about a few simple tools that statisticians will use and will barely scratch the surface. If you were to take a full semester of statistics or more, you would learn a lot more detailed tools. But we're going to see a, a couple of things that you can do with data. So at the beginning here, as we talk about gathering data, one of the core concepts is sampling. The idea behind sampling is if there's a question we want to answer where we would have to gather data from a huge population, if that's not feasible, as it often is, then instead of gathering a full data set, we take a small sample, just like you would do if you were surveying to predict the result of an election, you could take a small sample and assume that the sample would be relatively similar to the population. Um, I give the example here of cooking a pot of soup in the same way that if you're cooking a pot of soup and you're trying to see how it's turning out, you can taste test it and that small sample tells you something about what the whole pot is like. The same idea if you sample a small group of people from a larger population, then you can get uh, results that are similar to what you would get if you sampled everyone. So it's imperfect, but you can get decent results, and the better your sample is, the better your results will be. So a couple of terms here, we talk about the population being the full group, and then the sample being a small group of people or objects that we select from that full population. So there's a little bit of discussion here on uh, what makes a good sample, a representative sample. Um, I've got a story here that describes how just picking a large sample isn't the most important thing. It's picking a good sample, a representative sample. And so there's a quick example of a few samples, and you can see whether they're representative or not. Um, a representative sample is more important than a large sample. So the way we tend to get representative samples, rather than trying to think through all the different possible categories that our population falls into and trying to carefully sample from that. For instance, if you were looking at college students and you divided them up into majors, you might say, well, you know, 30% are English majors and 20% are science majors. And so we want to make sure our sample has 30% English majors and 20% science majors. But if you do that, it's really, really hard to do that kind of thing well, so instead we just let randomness take care of it for us. We just randomly select people, and because we randomly select them, they tend to um, give representative samples if you do that. So that's kind of our, our um, key to getting representative samples, is that if we do things randomly, and we do that well, then the proportions tend to work out fairly similar to what the population looks like. That's a good way to do it. Now when you do this you have to make sure that you aren't randomly selecting just from one section of the population because that can throw things off. But if you're randomly selecting from the full population then you tend to get good results. And uh, there's a key here that with random samples it's important that each member of the population is equally likely to be selected. Again if you're only selecting from a small section of your population or you're not giving everyone an opportunity to be selected, it's more likely you'll have some sort of bias in your sample that will throw off results. So there's examples again here you can look through of random versus bias samples in ways that, that it may not, um, you may not get good results. Um, so there's a quick discussion of how to pick random numbers with a calculator, because if you need to go through and actually do it, um, you need a way to, to find random numbers. You can also just Google random number generator and you'll find websites that will let you pick random numbers very easily. Um, so you don't have to use a calculator if, if you find yourself in a position where you need to select random numbers.
So then we can talk about uh, different methods of doing the sampling. All of these have randomness in them, other than maybe convenient sampling. But there are different variations that can uh, help you with different kind of scenarios. So the simplest way is using simple random sampling, where you just number everybody and randomly select some numbers that correspond to people you're selecting or items or whatever your, your population is. Uh, so simple random sampling is the most basic, straightforward, and, and probably the most common type of sampling. Um, and there are a few more. Convenient sampling is where you just pick things that are easy to pick. And you can read the description there. Uh, systematic sampling is where you kind of go through in order um, and pick, say, every third or every tenth object in the, in the population. The last two are very similar, and so it's important to pay attention to these two because it's easy to confuse the two. In both cases, you divide your population into categories. So say we could divide college, student, college students based on the year that they are, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. With stratified sampling, you pick a few from each category. So I've got a visual here where I've divided them into five categories based on their color. And then stratified sampling says, let's pick a couple from each color. So we'll make sure to pick two from each one. And there's some randomness. So we randomly select two out of each color, which gives us a total of 10 in our sample. Cluster sampling says, okay, now that we have our groups, instead of picking a few from each group, we're going to pick one or more entire groups. So say we pick all of the blue ones and all of the teal ones. So now we have the same sample size. We still have 10, but we have chosen a couple of entire groups instead of just a few from each group. Um, so stratified sampling means you kind of evenly spread out your sample among all the groups. Cluster sampling means you grab a couple of groups individually. And there's an example that you can read through of, of why this might be important and why uh, cluster sampling or stratified sampling might be preferable. There's an example here where you can go through and, and read through the um, a few scenarios and examples of these sampling methods. So I'd recommend going through that to make sure you understand the concept behind these uh, sampling options. There's an example of actually picking a sample using these different sampling methods. And again, you can go through and there's a lot of detail here. So it's a long example because it uh, goes through in, in great detail on each type of sampling from that same population. And uh, that brings us to the end of section 3.1 on gathering data. Again, it's a lot about sampling and then um, some other concepts to think about like representative samples and sample size and things like that.